So you want to get an ITIN. Today, we're going to talk about ITINs, what it is, who is eligible, and how you can apply. Check the timestamps in the caption for any specific topic or question you may have. Before we start, it's important to note that this guide is for informational purposes only. It does not, nor is it intended to, constitute financial or legal advice. Please consult attorneys and trusted financial professionals regarding your personal situation. What is an ITIN? ITIN stands for Individual Taxpayer Identification Number. It is a tax processing number assigned to an individual who is ineligible to apply for a social security number. The federal government issues ITINs to help them collect taxes. Under federal law, everyone, regardless of immigration status, who earns U.S. sourced income is subject to federal income tax. ITIN filers contribute an estimated $23.6 billion in federal taxes and $11.74 billion in state and local taxes every year. What are the benefits of having an ITIN? With an ITIN, you can comply with legal income tax filing requirements, access state and local relief funds such as COVID-19 financial aid, build credit and obtain credit cards and loans, such as car loans, student loans, home mortgage, and more, open interest-bearing bank accounts and investment brokerage accounts, access state and local tax credits, and also receive funds from employment dispute settlements. Furthermore, if you become eligible to adjust your immigration status, having an ITIN can demonstrate positive equities and good moral character because it shows that you have complied with federal tax obligations by paying your taxes. An ITIN may also help you establish the duration of your U.S. residency and marital status. Reminder, ITINs do not provide employment authorization. Many immigrants find that working as an independent contractor is a good way to make a living. Everyone, regardless of immigration status, must report their self-employed U.S. source income and pay taxes. Having an ITIN ensures that the IRS can match your tax payments to your tax liabilities and provides proof that you have been complying with U.S. tax law. Who is this guide for? This guide is specifically for people who meet the following requirements. You have never had an ITIN before and are applying for the first time. You have never filed an income tax return before, but will be filing one as a single filer with no spouse or dependents, and you currently reside in the U.S. If you've ever had a social security number issued to your name, do not apply for an ITIN. Keep using your social security number, even if your work authorization has expired. Okay, here are the three things that you need to apply for an ITIN. First, IRS Form W-7, Application for IRS Individual Taxpayer Identification Number. Two, IRS Form 1040, Individual Income Tax Return. And number three, personal documents proving identity and foreign status. Okay, let's move on to actually applying for an ITIN. Form W-7 is a single page form. In the upper right hand corner under application type, you will check the box to apply for a new ITIN. Note that the instruction at the very top of the form says, don't submit this form if you have or are eligible to get a US social security number. U.S. resident alien based on days present in the United States filing a U.S. federal tax return. You will also fill out your first, middle, and last name on line 1A. If your birth name is different, you will fill that out on line 1B. On line 2, you will fill out your mailing address. You can then ignore line 3 for an address. On line 4, you'll need to fill out your birth information, date of birth, country of birth, city and state or province are optional. And lastly, you'll check the box for assigned sex at birth. Then on other information, line 6A, you'll list your country or countries of citizenship. 6B, foreign tax ID. 6C, type of US visa only if it's applicable. 6D, identification documents submitted, such as a passport driver's license, USCIS documentation, or other. You'll also need to fill out who it was issued by and the identification numbers on it, what the expiration date is, 
and you'll also need to fill out date of entry into the United States. Because this is for first-time applicants, on 6E, have you previously received an I-10? You will check no. Similarly, 6F, first-time applicants can leave this one blank. And lastly, we're at the bottom of the form. You'll need to sign and date it and leave your phone number. If you needed further assistance from a delegate or an acceptance agent, they'll fill out their information here. You'll also need to file an income tax return with your ITIN application. An individual income tax return must be attached or the ITIN application will be rejected. Proof of income or eligibility for a federal tax credit will be needed to correctly file your income tax return. We strongly recommend visiting a VITA site or low income tax preparer or using a trusted professional tax preparer to make sure the information is correctly reported to the IRS. Tax preparer confidentiality. In case you were wondering, Internal Revenue Code Section 6103 prohibits the IRS from releasing taxpayer information to other government agencies, except for special circumstances, such as a federal court order. The IRS does not share ITIN data with USCIS or ICE without a warrant or court order. Lastly, you must include original documentation or certified copies of documents that prove identity and foreign status. You can bring your original documents to an embassy or consulate where they can make a certified copy for you so you don't have to mail your original documents. A certified copy is one that the original issuing agency provides and certifies as an exact copy with an official stamped seal from the agency. The IRS will not accept notarized copies. If you do not have an embassy or consulate near you, you can bring documentation to a certifying acceptance agent or CAA who can verify your original documents, or you can make an appointment at a Taxpayer Assistance Center, TAC, that provides in-person document review. On this screen, you'll see the different documents that can prove your identity and or foreign status. It's important to note that you'll need to prove both, so you may need more than one document depending on what you provide. Note that only a passport can be used as a standalone document to prove identity and foreign status. If you use a certifying acceptance agent, you must bring a completed W-7, a prepared tax return, and your original documents for verifying identity and foreign status. The CAA's role is to certify that the original document or documents are valid. The CAA will sign up on the ITIN application and mail the entire ITIN package to the IRS. Some CAAs also offer tax preparation services for an additional cost. If you were paid in cash and did not receive a W-2 or 1099 form, you should be prepared to provide an estimate of your cash income for the tax return. CAAs may charge a fee for services. Be sure to ask about the cost. Your application with all of your certified documents will need to be mailed to Internal Revenue Service, ITIN Operation, PO Box 149342, Austin, Texas 78714. What does the IRS review and approval process look like? The IRS generally takes between 9 to 11 weeks to process an ITIN application, but in some cases, they can take even longer. The IRS will mail back your original documents or certified copies, regardless of whether the application is approved or rejected. If your application is rejected, the IRS will send you a letter that states which parts were completed incorrectly and will ask you to resubmit the application. If your ITIN application is approved, the IRS will send you a letter with the number assigned to your name. Make sure to keep a copy of all of your paperwork, so make sure you scan it or take a picture of it. The IRS sends all communication via mail only. Beware of any potential scams, phone calls that say you have an outstanding tax bill. Before we move into an example of filing for an ITIN, here are some frequently asked questions. Does it cost money to apply for an ITIN? No, there is no application fee to obtain an ITIN. However, since you will need to submit an income tax return, you may have to pay any taxes you owe. 
if you require additional assistance through a tax preparer or a certifying acceptance agent, they will likely charge fees for their services. Be sure to ask ahead of time what their fees are. Can I prepare the application myself? Technically, yes, but the tricky part is ensuring the income tax return is properly prepared. Find a volunteer income tax assistance program near you to see if you qualify for free tax return preparation. Some VITA sites also provide certifying acceptance agent services so that you can get your tax return prepared and get your documents verified for the ITIN application together. I didn't earn any income in 2022. Can I still apply for an ITIN? You can still file an income tax return for a prior year where you earned income, even if it's past the deadline. However, you will be subject to late filing penalties and interest because the tax return and potential tax payment will be considered late. Remember, you must file an income tax return with the ITIN application in order to qualify. What happens if I miss the tax filing deadline and can't submit my ITIN application? You can still file an income tax return past the deadline, but additional penalties and interest will accrue. If you know you won't be able to submit the documentation for an ITIN before April 15th, you can request an extension for filing your income tax return on Form 4868. On the SSN line, you would write ITIN to be requested. If an extension is granted, it only extends the filing due date to October 15th. Any taxes owed will still be due on April 15th. You can include a check payment with Form 4868 for estimated tax liability to avoid penalties and interest. You must mail your request for an extension before the filing deadline. For 2023, April 15th is a Saturday, so the filing deadline is April 18th, the next business day. Here is a copy of Form 4868, Application for Automatic Extension of Time to File U.S. Individual Income Tax Return. On the left-hand side, Part 1, Identification, you'll fill out your name and your mailing address. You'll also put down ITIN to be requested under Social Security number. On the right-hand side, Part 2, Individual Income Tax. On line 4, you'll need to fill out your estimate of total tax liability. On line 5, only fill this part out if you have made any tax payments. Otherwise, leave it blank. On line 6, you'll subtract line 5 from line 4. And on line 7, you'll write down the amount that you're paying to submit with Form 4868. Here is an example of a check payment that you might make. You'll need to make sure that the check is payable to the United States Treasury. On the memo line, you'll need to write down your legal name, tax year, Form 4868, and ITIN to be requested. You'll also need to fill out the date of the check and the amount that you're paying, and you'll need to sign the check. Depending on what state you live in and whether you're making a payment with Form 4868, you'll need to send it to one of these mailing addresses. Next question. After I get my assigned ITIN, do I still need to file future income tax returns? If you earn U.S. sourced income, you may be required to file an income tax return. Please consult with a professional tax preparer. If you do not file an income tax return for three consecutive tax years, your ITIN will expire. If your ITIN expires, you will have to renew your ITIN to keep it valid. Okay, if you're eligible for an ITIN and are interested in walking through the process, let's go. Case study, Sally Park. Sally Park is a recent college graduate from the University of Texas at Austin. She is 22 years old and thinking deeply about her future. She loves crocheting and earned $1,000 from selling handmade items on campus last year. She wants to expand her business by obtaining a credit card and building her credit. She doesn't know where to start though because she is undocumented without DACA and thus without a social security number. Let's go over her journey to apply for an individual taxpayer identification number. What documents does Sally need to apply for an ITIN? She'll need Form W-7, Application for IRS ITIN, Form 1040, Individual Income Tax Return, a certified document that shows proof of identity, and a certified document that shows proof of foreign status. 
what information does Sally need to apply for an I-10? Here we've listed Sally's name, mailing address, date of birth, country of birth, assigned sex at birth, and date of entry into the U.S. Now let's go through with filling out Form W-7, an application. In the upper right-hand corner, under Application Type, we've checked the box Apply for a new ITIN. Under Reason you're submitting Form W-7, Sally is considered a U.S. resident since she has been present in the U.S. since 2009, and she will be filing an income tax return. So, she will check Box C accordingly. Sally will fill out her name, her mailing address, and her birth information. Under other information, Sally will need to fill out 6A, country of citizenship, is South Korea. She'll leave 6B blank. 6C does not apply to her since she does not have a U.S. visa. Under 6D, she plans to submit a copy of her Korean passport, issuing agency with South Korea. Her passport ID number is listed there and the expiration date. She's also filled out date of entry into the U.S. Because this is Sally's first time applying for an I-10, she will check off no on 6E, have you previously received an I-10? On 6F and 6G, she can leave both of these line items blank. And lastly, Sally just needs to sign and date the form and leave her phone number. Sally uses the IRS search tool to find a VITA site near her. She is considered a low-income earner, so she qualifies for free tax return preparation. However, she feels nervous about going to see a tax preparer and to disclose her immigration status to them. What does Sally need to do to protect her information? Trick question. She doesn't have to do anything. The IRS is not authorized to release taxpayer information to other government agencies, except for providing information to the Treasury Department for investigations about tax issues or under a federal court order. Let's say Sally gets her income tax return prepared at a VITA site on March 31st. She realizes she needs to get a certified copy of her Korean passport, which demonstrates both identity and foreign status. Unfortunately, Sally lives in Austin, and the closest Korean consulate location is in Houston, which is a few hours away. She can't travel there in time for the April 18th tax filing deadline, but she wants to avoid any penalties or fees for late filing. What are Sally's options? Hint, there are two answers. Option 1. Sally can find a certifying acceptance agent near her by using the search tool on the IRS website and ask if they have any availability before April 18th. Follow-up question. What documents would Sally need to bring to a CAA appointment? She would need to bring Form 1040 Income Tax Return, Form W-7 ITIN Application, and her passport. The agent will then sign off on the ITIN application to certify that her passport was a valid document. Option two, alternatively, Sally can file Form 4868 to request an extension on her income tax return filing. On the section for SSN, she would write down ITIN to be requested. This will give Sally an additional six months to get the certified copy of her passport from the Korean consulate or to see a CAA to certify her passport. Follow-up question, when should Sally file Form 4868 and does she need to submit anything else with it? Sally should file it on or before April 18th. She would need to make a check payment to the IRS for taxes owed and should submit that with Form 4868. That concludes today's presentation. For more resources, please find the additional information on this page. Special thanks to Jackie Bimo, Senior Policy Analyst at National Immigration Law Center for contributing to this project. Thank you.